Hi everyone, welcome to the Highlights from Ukraine podcast, your daily audio summary of the latest news reported in the Ukrainian media. My name is Artem, and here is the news. For 353 days, Ukraine defends itself against the Russian invasion. Valery Zaluzhny, commander-in-chief of the armed forces of Ukraine, said that Ukrainian troops regained previously lost positions in some parts of the front and strengthened them, reports Ukrainska Pravda. He discussed the situation on the front line with Mark Milley, U.S. chairman of the Joint Chief of Staff. Zaluzhny stressed that the situation is most tense on the Donetsk front, where the enemy is launching up to 50 attacks daily. Fierce battles continue in the area of Vuhledar and Marienka. According to him, despite the enemy's constant pressure, the Ukrainians continue to keep Bakhmut under control and are taking steps to stabilize the front line around the city. Zaluzhny noted that the key to success on the battlefield is effective firepower, which requires an appropriate amount of weapons and ammunition. He also shared his concern over Russia's use of maritime surface drones, which poses a threat to civilian navigation in the Black Sea. Earlier, media reported that Russia attacked a bridge in Odessa region with a maritime drone. Russia does not have sufficient resources to launch a large-scale offensive by the anniversary of the full-scale invasion of Ukraine on February 24, reports Interfax Ukraine. According to the Defense Intelligence of Ukraine, Russia plans to intensify its efforts in the east of Ukraine in the coming weeks, noting that now it is trying to find weaknesses in Ukraine's defense. However, these are not large-scale offensive operations. The main goal of the Russian troops remains to achieve at least some tactical success in eastern Ukraine. Defense intelligence added that Russia lacks high-precision weapons. Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council Alexei Danilo said that the Russians have already started their huge offensive, but the invaders are having huge problems with it. According to him, Ukrainian troops are repelling it very successfully. Commenting on the statement of the deputy head of the Russian Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sergei Vershinin, that Russia is allegedly ready for negotiations with Ukraine without preconditions, the Secretary of the National Security and Defense Council noted that the Russians are trying to divide and create two Ukraines, like two Koreas. Danilo stressed that there will be only one Ukraine. Over 20,000 people submitted applications to join new brigades of the National Guard, Police and Border Guards, the so-called Offensive Guard, reports Hromatske. These forces are created to take part in the future liberation of Donbass and Crimea. The next stage is the processing of applications. The selected candidates must collect the necessary documents, undergo psychological testing and medical examination after that. The National Guard stressed that all these selection stages are necessary because candidates need to have high motivation and also meet other requirements to be part of such units. The first batch of L-70 anti-aircraft guns supplied by Lithuania is already in Ukraine, reports European Pravda. The Minister of Defense of Lithuania said that guns and ammunition which will help defend critical infrastructure have already arrived in Ukraine. The transfer of 36 of L-70s to Ukraine was announced in the latest large aid package from Lithuania. The country's defense ministry believes that they would be particularly effective in fighting Iranian-made Shahed drones. The Telegraph informs that British weapons and military equipment can be produced in Ukraine. Negotiations are underway, reports Ukrainska Pravda. According to the publication, senior British defense industry officials are discussing these plans with their counterparts in Kyiv, and any deal is likely to be seen as a significant strengthening of UK-Ukraine relations. The aim is to create joint enterprises that would produce weapons and equipment under license. British companies are looking to outbid French and German rivals to put Britain first in line. As our format is designed to give you only the most important news, we feel that on some topics more in-depth discussion is needed, and that is exactly what we are doing. In a new segment called Long Talk, we discuss different topics in and around Ukraine with invited guests, from experts to eyewitnesses and ordinary Ukrainians who live through the war. Our first episode on Ukraine's war economy is already out. Be sure to check it out wherever you listen to our podcast. We call on you to demand from governments of your countries to impose the toughest sanctions possible on Russia and its citizens to stop their invasion of Ukraine.